Okay, let's talk about all of it. First of all, welcome to Des Moines, where yeah. it is a negative 11 degrees. Thankfully, we are inside, all cozy. Um, Guy, I want to start with you. Let's talk about these polls, the state of play. Um, it seems like the race is already decided, but... I was full of surprises. It can be. I mean, the margin, though, for Donald Trump is so significant. And you look at the last handful of polls out of this state, Trump is right around 50 percent, just below, just above. It seems like that could be attainable to get to an outright majority. What has to be a concern for the DeSantis campaign is there are now multiple polls showing him slipping into third place. Now, it's possible that his reservoir of support, the intensity of his support, his ground game, which is very good here, he's worked very hard in the state, maybe will help overcome some of the polling slippage. But he has put almost all of the eggs of his campaign into the Iowa basket, and a third place finish would be catastrophic, I think, for his campaign. So I think Nikki Haley licking her chops, wondering, is this number real? And if so, is that a springboard into New Hampshire next week? We'll be talking about that later in the show. We, we always ask, you know, is it really, do the polls really matter? Because especially in a state like Iowa, right, where it's not a lot of people are going to go out and caucus. When you think about how many people are registered Republicans, how many people live in this state, Charlie, um, should the governor be looking at these polls and really worrying too much? I mean, he says he's not worried because he believes that his committed caucus goers are going to come out. Well, that's the great thing about elections. Uh, these polls are completely meaningless. They and all of it goes out the window starting tomorrow uh, when Iowans show up. And it's particularly meaningless in a place like uh, Iowa, where uh, you have to it, it, enthusiasm counts like times ten uh, for your candidate because, especially if it's negative eleven degrees. I mean, I don't want to walk out to the you know to the car. Let alone go out to a schoolhouse, go to a firehouse, oh, come go on. somewhere, be tough. and you, you no, you have to be tough, and these people are tough, and so um, and I, I and I agree with Guy. I do think though that when when uh, you look at these polls and you see Trump uh, nearing fifty percent in the polls, that is uh, extremely significant. I also think it's interesting that uh, you know the Trump campaign has taken nothing for granted here. They have put everything into fight, and, and he, you know. For the first time we saw, I think it was yesterday, he started to go after Vivek yeah. Ramaswamy. And I think that what that probably has to do with is he is interested, that's where the 50% exactly. thing comes into play. He is trying to get over that 50%. Siphon whatever yeah. Vivek might have. And, and it's funny, you know, when he talks about it, he, you, you can tell he's very focused on this 50%. 50 he's gone back to the history of Republicans, uh, you know, uh, how they have performed, how many... Uh, and th that no Republican has ever attained 50 percent. And so I think that that's probably like his, that's his, his white whale right mm -hmm. now. He doesn't want to just win. He wants to win big, and he wants right. this to be done after the Iowa exactly. caucuses. We'll see if that happens. I want to play really quickly the soundbite for you, Jessica, because it's so interesting. David um, Axelrod says, um, the lack of voter enthusiasm for Nikki Haley could hurt her on Monday. This is from, of course, this Des Moines uh, Register poll. Half her support comes from independents and Democrats who say they're going to vote in the Republican uh, caucuses. Are they going to drag themselves out on a, a bitterly cold night to sit through two hours of, uh, of, of discussion uh, to cast a vote for Nikki Haley? It may happen. It could happen. But it, 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 it looks worrisome to me from her perspective. And then really quickly, we'll go to Haley and DeSantis because they responded to this. I'm not a political pollster. I'm not going to worry about the numbers. What I am going to say is the momentum and the energy on the ground is strong. To me, the only numbers that matter are the ones that we're going up and everybody else went down. I think it's very hard to poll an Iowa caucus, a period, which the 16 poll was not accurate um, and predicted, but especially one in negative 20 degrees. Our voters are very motivated. Yeah, I mean, he's right. I mean, you got to really be motivated, like Charlie said, to get out there. I barely came to work today, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. We're glad you did. It. No, I, yes. no, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, it's super exciting, and it's great to see people's spiel, right? That's what you're seeing, the last-minute spiel, right? This is why you shouldn't be worried if you're a supporter of mine. You know, you're going to show up. People are really passionate about me. Don't believe the polls except the polls where I'm up, right? That's yeah. what Trump... 
Trump made that famous in 2016 yeah. and has carried on with it. Um, the enthusiasm question, though, is something that Democrats think a lot about because we have had this happen in 2016 in the primary. There was all this Bernie fever, right? Have you seen Bernie Sanders' rallies? And I kept saying I was a strong Hillary Clinton supporter. I said, well, how many of those people are actual Democrats? Right, people right. who are going to turn out, and then Hillary won by a huge margin, obviously, in the primary, went on to lose the general. Or in the 2020 general election, Trump rallies dwarfed Biden events, and Biden ended up winning by 7 million votes. So I understand what they're trying to do, and there's the weather element of all of this, but it is really hard for me to see, and we were talking about this earlier, Trump, the energy here just feels very Trump to me, and I know that a lot of people are quiet. Uh, about what they're going to go and do. But uh, just based on anecdotal evidence thus far, it feels yeah. like this is Trump country. And based on anecdotal evidence that I've experienced, just being out on the trail guy and everybody else, um, I've met a lot of Trump supporters, huge fans of him, um, but they feel like they don't care what happens in Iowa. They don't care what happens in New Hampshire because they know he's going to get the nomination, right? They just feel like he's going to get it. So they say, why do I need to go caucus for him? which he doesn't want to hear. And well, he's telling them, don't have don't, that mentality. Right. Well, he's You've saying you should die, go. actually, to come well, and do it. For he me. enjoys a little, a little hyperbole. <laughs> Get out there and vote, I think, is the overall message. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, it's inspiring. I mean, you know, do it, do it life or death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he meant that. No, I <laughs> said it. Yeah. He was obviously being hyperbolic, but they're, he, they want everyone to get out there and, and commit, commit to caucus. Absolutely. Okay, tomorrow morning, Fox and Friends will have Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and Vivek Ramaswamy for a reaction to the Iowa caucuses. You will not want to miss that. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.